This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the Awesome Cast, episode 502 from the Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. I'm here. It's podcast day. The podcast dog is on the couch. So here a little bit here and there, as I'm sure inevitably he'll wake up. I hope he doesn't start snoring again. But anyways, we got a crew with us, first of all, from Big Bank International Esquire. He's a gadget guru over there, uh, uh, working from home, as you, as everybody. Uh, John Chichilla, how you doing, Chilla? Pretty good. Working from the bunker. From the bunker. And I've, I, and I've actually been off for three days. Really? So it's been nice. It, well, in not including I have five days if you include the weekend. Ooh. I took Friday, Monday, and today off. There you go. Okay. Oh, nice refresher. Nice refresher. Yep. I, I, I needed that, too. I, I, I escaped to the homestead, hung out with Mother Sorg. And uh, and uh, uh, and we watched. we literally just watched movies on a Roku the entire weekend. It was too hot to go outside, so, <laughs> so I I I I watched movies with her, and then looked out the window and realized I'm surrounded by trees. It was fantastic. Uh, so, uh, but also with us another gadget fellow from some big institution is Crazy Kraus. Ron Kraus is with us. Hello, how are you? <laughs> I don't remember what we. I, I, it's been a month. I forget what we call <laughs> you. Okay, sorry. With with the blueprint of the Millennium Falcon back there, maybe he's just the the Millennium Falcon pilot. Don't I wish I was the Millennium Falcon pilot? Pilot. <laughs> uh, how you doing, Kraus? I'm great. How about yourself? Good, 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 good. Uh, but this is the awesome cast. You can check out everything at awesomecast.com. Please uh, follow us on the social media, Awesome Cast on the Twitter, uh, on the Facebook page. A Facebook page and the Facebook group. A lot of people sharing stories throughout the week over in the Facebook group. So please, uh, of course, it was kind of a slow week with the holiday and everything, too, uh, as you'll probably tell as we go through the show. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's, that's fine. We can we can deep dive some of these topics. Uh, and, uh, and of course, the, the Facebook page is where we are live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern time. And that's where we keep an eye on the chat room for the most part. But we we are also live on the YouTube and the Twitch is in front of me and the Periscope via our Twitter page. So follow any of those so you can get the live feed wherever it is convenient for you. But uh, got a good discussion happening in the chat room, including our friends uh, uh, Dave Potter, uh, Steve from the Bold Sports Podcast, which came back last week. So please go check that out. Amanda Narcissi is out, out there too from Bold Pittsburgh. Also a new podcast uh, over there that they just rebooted. So please go check that out. And uh, yeah, and, and please, if you're with us now, uh, uh, if you're streaming us, please hit the like, heart, whatever buttons hit the share button and help get the awesome out there if you catch us later on the podcast or the video versions later uh please again put a like put a share out put a review in for the on the podcast page we really appreciate the support there also we do really appreciate the support from our audio partners our friends at the 405 media.com as well as over at postindustrial.com for postindustrial audio help and share great po- pittsburgh podcasting and uh, thank you to our patreon supporters uh patreon.com slash awesomecast first our friends at the coffee club level uh matt weller john DeGore, and john carmen at the fan of the show level we have michael fedor pghmuseums.org dave podner and i apologize i didn't miss him last week but professor buzzkill is a new patreon supporter over there by the way with a lot of stuff going on uh he has been hitting a lot of the hot issues <laughs> hot button issues going on right now uh so if you are cons- if you are interested in learning more about what a lot of people are t- uh, frankly arguing on twitter about right now uh he, he does have a lot of good stories on there but good, good stories good histories his stories his stories is this does that track guys can i get a <laughs> <laughs> good his stories on there um and over I'm, on professor buzzkill.com 
but anyways his, uh, i'm not fond- histories, histories or his stories his stories his, his stories yes there's uh, stories about his, history okay just just i'm just leaning into my fumbles at this point <laughs> it's what's happening welcome to the new words uh anyways let's get started with our awesome things of the week crazy Krause, what is your awesome thing Okay, so I don't know how old school you guys go back, but there was once a long time ago. Well, it's actually still there. A game called Eve Online, mm-hmm. and it, it was this massive ship-based space game where you know they have all these giant battles. Every once in a while, you'll hear, you know, fifty million people were involved in this space battle and all this good stuff. Well, they're actually bringing that game to tablets and phones in the form of um, Eve Echoes. And from what I can see from it, because I actually am uh, one of the beta testers, they have literally ported, for the most part, the, the whole game to a tablet and a phone. And it's quite spectacular so so this is kind of comparable to uh fort like coming over right or is it its own entity is it going to intermingle with uh no, it's, it's its own entity yeah okay. so it's its own world so and that's one of the nice things about it and one of the things i think that has a lot of people excited because eve is is one of those real-time games mm-hmm. so like you know we've all played my warcraft or um starcraft you know where you level up skills you you train skills you have to go out and you know beat up 20 of these things and then you return and you get to level up your sword or whatever but in eve it's been it's actually time-based so you start a skill training and it's going to take 45 minutes to train that skill. Mm-hmm. And that's 45 minutes of real time hmm. training. It's not you a know, walk so, away kind the, of thing. So there are some skills that will take days, weeks just to level up. So having this game basically starting over gives people an opportunity, you know, because there are players out in that game who've been playing that game since the day it started. So obviously you'll never, you know, get higher than those people because they have just all that time invested in this game. So it's, uh, it's kind of interesting. Um, it's a game I played with some friends years and years ago. Um, and we're actually me and one of my buddies are uh, play got into the beta together, and it's like old times. It's kind of fun, and it's just crazy because you know you're playing it on a tablet, you're playing it on a phone. Mm-hmm. And just, it's does it? I, what system did you play it on the PC? Was it a PC game yeah, before? It was a PC game only. So, is there going to be a chat built into it? I guess they yeah, just expect you to chat. Okay. Yes, there's a chat. There's you know chat windows and everything, just like if it was on a PC game. You can talk to your corporation, which is your like guild. Um, they have local chat, you know, um, system wide chat. Um, I, I know me and um, uh, Bunny. I'll say that you probably remember who I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're 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 playing over. Sometimes we'll get on uh, Facebook messenger and just start a call and talk that way you know but to be playing it on a tablet it's great i can be sitting in the living room with the wife and she's watching whatever show she wants to watch and i'm blowing up ships and eve online you know what i mean it's great (laughs) everybody's happy you know that was a that was a cool i I really like how they did everything time-based because i remember you used to set like make sure you went did you remote in or I can't remember what you did. Yeah, you, you did something. Go in, or you go in and you, you queue. There's a queue of mm-hmm. skills you can set. And, and it only lets you set so many hours worth of skills until your queue is full. So they used, they used to make widgets like the, I had a widget on my phone that I could swipe over to one of the, the Android pages and it would show me how, how long I have left. Because Because basically, if you didn't get back on in time, you would literally waste time, real world time, <laughs> not training a skill. So, yeah. 
Awesome. So I'm very excited it's coming back. So go check that out. It's uh, eveechoes.com, I believe. Um, yeah. Uh, sorry, I was distracted a little bit. First of all, I, I think, I don't know if Crossy might be getting a little bit of breath on your microphone. Uh, also, oh, it might be my fan. I also, apologize. Apparently, right now is the time that Facebook decided to switch things over for me, and I have some insane new layout. Uh, yes, I've had that for a couple weeks. It's what? Great. You have the dark you have the dark mode? I had an option for dark mode, but I didn't think I, I wasn't up for it yet. Um, what the hell is this? Yes, it's oh, insane. Okay, all right. It's not my awesome thing. Um, uh, let's <laughs> let's see. Uh, Chilla, you I you have an awesome thing as well. I do. So, um, with the heat going on outside, I don't know what what it's like where our listeners are, but here it's it's mm. it's darn right hot. Um. So I was looking around and I, and we, I actually camped in my backyard with my son over the weekend. Um, and it was really, really hot sleeping outside. So I'm like, how can I overcome the heat? And I need to do a bunch of work out in the yard over the next two days. So I started Googling around, looking around, and there's this amazing device from Ryobi, which is like the Home Depot company um, or the Home Depot brand of tools. Um, And it is a fan that sits on top of a five gallon bucket. And there's a hose that comes down the picture on their site. It shows it where it's hooked up to an actual like, like the hose, like your water hose. But it actually, it has a special ability to go on top of the fan. There's a clear plastic hose that you put down into the five gallon bucket and it has misters built into it and it's all battery powered. So you can carry this thing around and blow air and shoot water mist. Um, So if you look at the second picture in second row down, um, not that, not the video, but the, I got here. Like with, with, with it just on sitting on, okay. on top of the bucket itself. Yep. Um, so you you literally just plug one right. any one of your normal Ryobi batteries into the back of it. It comes with one and and a charger. Um, I have a couple of these for other tools that I have. Mm-hmm. Um, but you plug this in and it's it's rather nice. You can just kind of sit there and get misted and and have some airflow while you're working in the yard. Nice. Might have to look. And I would say. I, with no wind, I would say you you'll get like it'll shoot about five feet of mist. Mm-hmm. Now, if it's windy, all bets are off because it's just <laughs> was small water particles. But I I noticed like even working out on my back patio and having it on. I mean, I could walk up to it and get pretty wet from the the mist, and I was dry by the time I went to the other side of the patio. So. It, it 90, definitely came in handy. Has a ninety dollar item from Home Depot. Yeah, and I I swear before the, so they're all sold out right now. They're going for of about a hundred and fifty dollars on Amazon. So Imagine my that. my plan definitely for next year is to buy a couple of these. Mm-hmm. We want at least one more, but to probably buy three and then sell them for double the price because mm. that's the going rate right now on Amazon. I because because people are wrong more often than computers. I actually tracked down that the Monroeville store had one and I ran out yesterday morning and got one. And when I went in, I said, you know, it says limited, limited quantities on, on your thing here. You're the only store in a, in a hundred mile radius with, with one of these. Can you point to me in the store where it's at? And the lady said, Oh, I don't know. Go talk to someone in home and garden. So I went to home and garden um, the guy said he's never seen these before. Huh. Um, go talk to go go find someone else. So I went to customer service and she's like, people have been coming in all weekend. We don't have any left. Um, the website's wrong. So I'm like, there's a computer keeping track of your inventory. There has to be one somewhere, mm-hmm. um, whether it's wedged behind something on a shelf or whatnot. So I, I roamed around the store long enough that, that I found these other fans. Um, and I was talking to one of those the co the store workers back there, and she actually 
was the first person that actually punched it into her like little handheld device. And she's like, yeah, there might be like one, but I, it could have been stolen. It could have been whatever. Mm -hmm. And, and lo and behold, she looks up at that moment and said, there it is. So I got literally the last That's one awesome. in the store. <laughs> Jeez. So kudos to her for helping me out. Um, and it is just an amazing little piece of machinery. That's why I don't even go to stores anymore. <laughs> I can say I just don't go to stores anymore. So the only reason I went was because I couldn't I couldn't order you can't order it online anymore. Mm-hmm. Like the season's over. So mm-hmm. I gotta wait for. So the they're not. Year. Yeah, right. So they're not going to have, have them in stock. Yeah. You know? And I'm not paying 150 bucks for it. No. No. Well, hey guys, my my thing is my awesome thing is is kind of a kind of personalized thing. So so I I took the I took the S8 with us um uh w- with me when I visited my mother's this weekend. It was like, well, hey, you know, I can pretty much have a game console on this thing. So I brought it. Brought my Xbox controller. I know we're going to probably talk about controllers a little later for. For those functions, and, and and there's a little game that gets played because of um um how many <laughs> how many like humble bundles and stuff I got that I don't even know what games I have, and they're being reintroduced to me as as GeForce now keeps just trickling in, adding random, very random games, and I found myself playing a game called Dark Siders out of nowhere, which I've never played before, and apparently, and I think I might have a couple copies of it up over on Xbox Gold as well. Um, I always thought it was Dark Souls. Which I knew is a terribly, uh, uh, a terribly difficult Poke game. Yourself in the eye game. Yeah. What's that? Poke yourself in the eye game. Yeah, like yeah. I couldn't even. I couldn't even My survive. My son the- loves that damn game, and I hate them. I couldn't even survive the tutorial. Um, and, oh. I, and I know, yes. I know, Riz has talked about it before. It, yeah. So, so I started playing it. It's just a hack and slash game, and I'm just like, wow, this is actually kind of fun, right? Like, it's just this stupid hack and slash. You're, you're heaven and hell are fighting for some reason and you're the god of war and all this stuff so um then turns out dark yeah yeah th- the third one is on x cloud so i i went down this weird rabbit hole of games like that right or even just dropping into like hey i never played tomb raider with all the nvidia graphics on <laughs> you know i played the i played the 360 version so i didn't even have half of that stuff um but no, that that was kind of my my little game with that. And again, it, you know, it's it's awesome. To just kind of if you go, know you're going someplace with decent internet, she's got good. Um, she's out of the middle of nowhere, but she has like 200 down on uh, Comcast. And I'm like, this isn't going to help your Hulu work better. That's all you do. <laughs> but there it is. It was five bucks difference, I guess. Um, so so that was kind of fun. It, it, and it is kind of um uh, uh uh fun to play that. What game is in my collection? Uh, if you've been on Steam for a while, or or like me, have been doing gold forever, and and don't like, you know, been hitting the button every month, or and don't know what games we kind of introduced to you. So th- th- that's kind of my awesome thing. It's kind of that that uh, 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 playing random stuff and discovering something like Dark Siders um, on that. Uh, so that th- that's all I got. <laughs> that's really all I got. It was a really slow weekend for me. <laughs> so it's okay, Sorg. We all have them. Yeah, it's just like I, I just—I try to have them, have them as often as I can. Yeah, well, I've been having them more often than usually, so it's just—I um, don't know. I, I guess I've gotten used to downtime, but I don't know. Wow, it's—it's—I'm I'm playing a lot of video games at least. You know, making that happen. I don't know so. about you guys, but I'm running out of stuff to watch on Netflix. Oh, I'm—I—I I finally got back. I, I'm rolling back into Clone Wars. Clone Wars is my thing right now. I think. <laughs> And uh, I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna try to keep going until I'm finally finished with it. I'm like mid season four. I've been trickling through okay. that thing here and there. So um, you just get to, you get to certain things and just like Ugh, I'm just not up for this. I don't even know why there's a war. I don't know what's happening. Nobody's a good guy in this thing. Everybody sucks. <laughs> yeah, it's too much like real life. Uh, <laughs> so, um, but yeah, there's there's that. Um, what do we do next? Oh, hey, I want to give a shout out to our friends supporting podcasting with the Perfect Pepperoni Pizza for uh, a good while now. Our friends at Slice on Broadway, SliceOnBroadway.com, uh, Beachview, Carnegie, East End, PNC Park, giving a shout out to my friends over there uh, because they've been doing a lot to support us and feeding feeding the back when we used to have people here. Uh, they were really good about helping support that. Make sure everybody drop it in for dinner so they didn't have to go across the street and get the taco. Although some will get tacos anyways because people 
Literally, people, even though, yeah, you've done that, Kraus. I see you raising your hand over there. Uh, even though we provide pizza to our, our people, um, they want to do the, 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 the entire tour of Beachview and get the street tacos and the pizza. <laughs> That's, I mean, we have so many delectables here in the Beachview neighborhood. So please go, please continue to support them um, as well. I have returned. I have returned to the taco stand uh, recently, but uh, that, that, but, but, slice on Broadway is what we're talking about here. <laughs> it turned into a beach, a beach view commercial instead of just a slice commercial for a moment there. But no, go check them out all over the place. Um, um, sliceonbroadway.com for more info and and, and order online, of course. So. So I was talking about streaming. Uh, uh, Chilla, you had you had a retracted awesome thing of the week. You had your second awesome thing of the week uh, um, um, that you had in there before. Can you tell me about what that was? So this isn't wasn't a streaming device. It was the eight bit eight bit do who makes a number of game pads and I don't want to say off brand, but kind of. They mimic niche the, niche type devices. They they tend to mimic the old school classic video game controllers that you can use for like retro gaming on your PC, correct? Yeah, but they also create things like this little device. Hmm. Which actually <laughs> this is, is the it's the eight bit new USB adapter. Okay. And you hmm. can plug this into numerous numerous systems and connect other controllers to them. So you can use this and plug it into your Switch and then pair up a PlayStation or Xbox controller what? to it. You can also use this to pair a PlayStation or Xbox controller to a Raspberry Pi. And it looks like a USB thumb drive, and that looks like what, Minecraft kind of and it, it, No, it looks like actually it's like a Mario blocks. Oh, okay. I think that's what they were going for. And I, it's like up, they, they do firmware updates on all their stuff, which is pretty cool. Um, Chill lives in the future. <laughs> I, I, but it, it's mainly for like retro gaming type stuff that mm. I want to use it for. That's the funny part. So, And that's why um, this kind of threw me too, because this is a game controller that's they, that they're saying is ideal for your Xbox game streaming on your phone like I've been doing. Yes, it's it's they're they're claiming it's ideal for Project X Cloud. Mm -hmm. Um, in fact, they're going to come out with, and we we already have them because we're cool. Um, clips for the uh, controllers that let you clip your phone to it. Um, but it will take um, the, it, the, this device is kind of like an X. It's like half Xbox controller, half PlayStation controller. Mm -hmm. Let's say 40% PlayStation controller, 50% Xbox controller, 10% so, Super Nintendo. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, the, the the sticks are on the bottom. The the mm -hmm. uh, the uh, they the, swap. The triggers and the bumpers are, are kind of sized and even size and everything. So I, ideally, this this is meant to be a lower profile version of what. Uh, and, and you know, I've been doing that with the Xbox controller itself, and it is kind of it's a lot to throw in your back. Right, so this 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 is just a lower profile of that, so it makes a lot of sense for something like that. Um, and the, the cool thing about m the majority of their controllers mm -hmm. um, is that they have I can't remember what the application is called. Uh, Ultim it's their ultimate software that allows you to customize button mapping, the sensitivity sensitivity of the stick and triggers. Mm -hmm. um, you can actually create controller profiles and switch between them on the fly from on the controller um which i thought was pretty which is pretty cool um so i don't know i thought it was a pretty cool device um and i'm pretty sure it's a cross-platform i'm guessing it'll work on ios and android the price was good too yeah it's not about 45 bucks it's cheaper yeah. than anything else. I thought it was even yeah. cheaper. It's cheaper than any other major yeah. manufacturers. Yeah, because it, 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 it's something like fifty or sixty bucks if you get a straight up Xbox controller, correct? Mm hmm So it yeah, right about that. Yeah. Seemingly based on color alone, from what I've seen on listings. Uh, so no, that yeah, it looks like a possibility. I like having the the real Xbox controller. 
um, for doing those kinds of things. But uh, but oh, I like this. Uh, I like this as a potential alternative, or even just a cheaper controller, right? Um, mm-hmm. If you need to, like, hey, I, I don't want to take away from the controllers at my Xbox. This one comes with me, kind of situation too. The so. clip rules. I got mine right here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I what, love what, this little thing. I don't like. I don't like the size of the controllers to carry with me. I want yeah. something that that is going to be a little slimmer in the bag. Well, you know, and the other thing is too is with the buttons. I always worry about keeping like when you shove something in the in your bag, are the buttons going to get pushed and broken or something? You know what I mean? I'm or trying to remember, it seems a little that's, thinner. That's where I wish I can't remember who it was. Someone I actually it's it's actually in my. It's in my laptop bag that I use for my Surface Pro and an iPad. Mm-hmm. Um, someone made one that was a, it was like a, it was a tiny controller, but it actually had a hard shell clip on cover that went over all of the buttons and the joysticks and everything, which I thought was a really good idea for, it, w- it was definitely meant to be to travel with you. Yeah. So, Stay on the video games because we got, we actually got a few stories along with this. Um, there was some news that came out, and this may be a pattern for many to come. Uh, there was an announcement on 2K21, uh, NBA 2K21 uh, is coming up. Um, so if I got all, if I read all this right, the base game you can get for any of the, let's just say any any version of it, you know, Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo, PC, Stadia. Uh, $60 for that launches September 4th. If you buy the version for a Sony or Microsoft console, you won't be entitled for the next-gen upgrade. You won't? This doesn't seem right. But they will be selling a $99.99 Mamba Forever Edition, uh, which comes with special My Team, My Player bonuses, as well as Kobe Bryant Digital Collection. Uh, if you pre-order, uh, do, 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 do. If you buy this version for the PS4 or Xbox One, you will also be entitled to the standard edition on PS5, T- PS5 and Xbox Series X when it launches in, in the holiday. So if you buy the souped up edition, it will also include the newer edition, apparently, but not with the upgrades. Is that, this, this was written kind of weird. Uh, from from what i gathered from some of the from some of the things that i read it was if you bought the base edition you didn't get the free upgrade to the next gen console but if you bought the souped up edition then you were guaranteed that you would be able to to get the updated upgraded version for which the new console that seems to contradict what they've said about xbox games being pretty much a- one copy will run across. Yeah, it's going to be backwards compatible, but are you going to get any of that? I'm guessing you're not going to get optimized graphics and all that other. There's, Uh, You probably are going to miss something out visually from an audio perspective. So I will have to buy the Series X version of Halo 5, but I guess we're talking more about these NBA 2K games and stuff. They're still going to be separate xbox one and series x games like series x is going to be its own SKU, right i'm get yes i'm guessing they are going to be their their own SKU, but you will be able to backwards it'll have backwards compatibility to play the older games you're probably just not getting the, the new graphics library and i'm guessing first party games like or what I'm guessing anything in oh what do they call it? What's they their name for it? What's their monthly Game Pass? Well, game Pass. I'm guessing Game Pass is going to get you pay for Game Pass, you get whatever system you're on, the latest and greatest. Yeah, yeah. The, the the thing that I thought was interesting was the one article I read that was up oh, and and um, Brandon in the chat hit it. The $99 seemed like a lot when you think of $59.99 versus $100. Mm-hmm. And maybe it's just my mind and the way I'm um, crazy. But they're raising all the all the games are going to go up 10 bucks. Yep. Yep. Which it makes me crazy because I haven't paid for uh, an actual physical copy of a game 
in my whole lifetime of owning an Xbox One. Mm -hmm. Developers Mm -hmm. need raises, too. (sighs) Yeah, but you know how much money they're saving on packaging? Yeah, oh, I'm sure the packaging, development costs, obviously going up, you know, uh, year over year. Yeah. Uh, it does. Well, when's matter. the last time we saw a price hike? Uh, it was, it was the N64, right? It's no, games, no, N64, N64 games weren't 60 bucks, were they? Oh, uh, I, I think some I, of them. I, I remember Super Nintendo games that were 80. Good cartridges really pumped them up. I think I think across. Yeah, the, that's because Nintendo surcharges the. Well, uh, no cartridges are more chip. expensive. Yeah, but yeah, because you have yeah, chips. But, but the but like it, Switch, the reason some of the games are more expensive on Switch is because if the game manufacturer they they had like two sizes, you could get a sixteen gig cart or a thirty two gig cart, mm-hmm. and there was there was an additional fee on obviously on the larger cart, um and. Which made the manufacturer toss that on to you. Hmm. With the digital copy, guys. Um, at this point. And then you then they're paying e- ingress and e- well, they're paying egress out of their system and they're paying for mm-hmm. Akamai. I mean, yeah, I, I get I get it, but there there is a there is a cost to doing it on their side too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm sure I'm sure the cost of their digital is lower than their packaging if you're if you're dropping the coin to get a ps5 series x game console i don't think you're going to mind the ten dollar difference on these games for you to play them in 4k that's what it's called smart delivery i found it smart delivery okay so i know with all of the first party titles xbox has already stated that via their smart delivery system Any game, any first party game you buy Mm -hmm. will automatically be upgraded to the the Series X for free. Those are upcoming games. Yeah. So any game that you like, so any game that you buy this generation, so like in the next few months, you know, if you buy the new Call of Duty or whatever, Mm -hmm. most of those, uh, oh, no, that's not a first party game. Uh, What's a first party game? Halo. Halo. You buy Halo when the Series X comes out and you try to launch Halo, you'll be getting yep. the Series X version with that via smart upgrade. It sounds like when you buy a game, I buy the Batman Telltale game on my phone. I download the iPad version of the iPad, right? right. I download Lego Brawls to my phone. I download the Apple TV version of the Apple TV. Right. right, the one for that hardware, the package for that hardware. Yeah. That seems yeah. to make sense. Just like when I play a 360 game on my Xbox One, I get that special patched edition of that 360 game, or how you get that if you put a disc in. So, which I have to tell you guys, this will probably shock you all, but I'm really on the fence of whether I'm actually going to buy the Series X when it launches, because quite honestly, where I play my games. Mm-hmm. I'm I don't have a 4K monitor. No. No. And so for me, um, there's nothing wrong with the X. I'm still running believe it or not my day 1 edition mm-hmm. Xbox. I just don't have a reason yet to upgrade. Yeah. And the, it's a lot of money. The only thing is so the only uh, it, it, for me it's going to be dependent on and again so much is up in the air right now. It, you know, the ideal thing looking forward was going to be Am I ready to buy a 4K television in the fall? If I right. am, and I'm on Game Pass, then I why don't I just bump up the ten bucks a month, right? Extra, make it twenty five bucks a month, thirty bucks a month, whatever that's going to finally be, and just and get the get the console. Xbox, get the console that way. I'm not dropping mm-hmm. five hundred bucks for a console, but if you tell me that I can do it for that, it's like I just bought I bought my last how many iPhones the same way for mm-hmm. for like thirty five bucks a month for my tricked out eight plus with, with uh, a quarter terabyte of Ram that somehow was full. I need to talk to you guys about that at some point. I got like, I got like a hundred gigs in system filling my phone and I can't figure out why. Uh, (laughs) That's a whole other episode. Um, What I'm confused about though, is how they can do X cloud to my mobile. 
but I need a huge machine at home to run a game. Well, like that's, yeah. that's, that's the other thing I'm thinking about is like, I know, well, am I, I think buying a console? Eventually, I think it's all going to mesh together, isn't it? Like uh, eventually, like that, I, I can, um, I can imagine that X cloud is going to drop directly on your Xbox. Like it, it, you're going to have to pay a fee for that. May, maybe I'm paying $25 a month for game pass with X cloud in the long run. They're gonna they're gonna have to roll that into live or something. Oh yeah, it's it's gonna be. Uh, I'm not. It's gonna be an upsell for yeah, Game Pass. It has to be, right? It, it's it's and, and I'm and I'm play gonna, anywhere anytime. For, but, but here's the thing: is they don't make money off the consoles, right? No, they right. don't. Like there is next to no profit margin on those consoles. And, but and can I tell you this console in particular? I have a feeling they're going back to their roots, mm-hmm. taking a and, loss, and they're gonna take a loss. So I. I I think they're going to do whatever PlayStation does. They're going to undercut them. So do we, um, we, we recall, I, I forget if we talked about it on here or somewhere else uh, <laughs> recently, the, uh, you know, when Xbox one came out, remember the whole thing where they said, uh, if you get the disc, it'll be tied to your account. And you don't have to put the disc in anymore, but everybody freaked out. Cause he had to get the console online. Right. Like, remember that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And how that pretty much ruined things for the last, yeah. t- last few years. Um, because I would love to never have to throw those discs in. Like I literally don't Amen. play. I literally don't play disc games because of that. Um, because I don't want to get off my couch more or less. <laughs> uh, but it, it, it's a little bit of friction. It's like I don't throw a DVD in because no, I'd rather go. Right. Up, I'd rather go on my Apple TV and do the thing right instead of go and take it off the shelf and find it and do it. Um, I feel like what's happening is what if hypothetical? What if Microsoft came out or PlayStation? Because both of them have this technology. Some are running on the other's technology to do this technology, um, <laughs> but because PlayStation also has streaming gaming, they do. I'm not quite as familiar with it. Brandon, I believe, is a PlayStation guy in the chat room that's been talking about it. He's talking about the uh, PS releases, PS Share, PS PS Plus releases for next month of Tomb Raider and uh, uh, NBA 2K20. Um, what if Microsoft came out hypothetically and said, there's no new console. We have X cloud. You don't need a console. People would freak out. Correct. Yeah. So, because they would need some way to get it onto their TV. So this is kind of a hedging the bet because people are still, while we are getting a lot of people on board with this idea of the streaming in beta, it's not mass p- appeal yet. Um, GeForce now is a very niche thing. Nobody's on board with it. Right, except for the these us on a, on a show called Awesome Cast that talks about tech every Tuesdays at seven. Right, we're into it. We're down with this idea. We have internet that supports it. I got to put another router in my house so I can support it in more of my house because I'm going to do that. Right, but um, you know, we 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 know that we aren't ready to dedicate a mass amount of people to that. So we need your hardware, but I'm 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 not saying don't come out with hardware. I'm just saying, it, look, and I, I feel like it's Google took bet. a run. Stadia didn't have a great launch. I think that's, they, they I, had that says a lot right there, right? Yeah, they but they had problems. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but what if Microsoft, like you said, John? What if Microsoft gives it away? Like you still have to buy the game. Mm-hmm. They give the system, the whole system away. No, 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 no. you they, give away the X Cloud. They get, they give oh, away I see. The you X give away X Cloud. Think, yeah, think about yeah. the way how you already pay for Halo Five, and now you also have it on the PC. Well, I don't know if that's one they did that with, but but I know they're doing that. I don't think Gears of War. Mm, yeah. Right. So, which is the same thing. It's that iPhone thing. You bought the, right. you bought Halo Six. It works on your Series X. It works on your Xbox One. It works on your PC. It works on your damn Samsung phone because we have X Cloud. That's amazing. That's that's yeah. kind of the dream, isn't it? It's the Fortnite dream. Oh, it's, it definitely is, and that's that's where I, I think they could. I'm not saying don't launch hardware. I think you have you don't have another option because you're <laughs> the the barrier to entry for some. To your point, is is too high, mm-hmm. or it's just not going to work for them. But I can't imagine if they if they charge for X Cloud, mm-hmm. that's a tough sell. Uh, again, it depends on what they're selling. It depends on what they throw in, but I can't, I cannot see them. I, I, I still think it's, it's, it's game pass. And wouldn't you like your game pass on X cloud? They'd be, they'd be better off 
doing something where it's like, at least for the first year, every time you buy a game, you get a free month mm-hmm. it's and, about, let, and let people stack. Remember, these are the guys that were the first one to popularize the idea that you pay for multiplayer. And they did oh, it. Yeah. And it worked. Mm-hmm. And they started sweetening the pot more and more, right? xCloud is another opportunity and another free thing for you to subscribe to. Guess what? For me to play my Steam games, I am now forever beholden for $5 a month to drop it to GeForce. NVIDIA. If I want to continue playing, as long as I can stop dropping games I'm actually playing. <laughs> so, um, but, uh, but, but, you know, Xbox, I'm going to be less worried about, right? Like, mm-hmm. I, I, I cannot imagine, unless for some reason I just stop playing video games again, not dropping 15 bucks a month to Game Pass. Because then I, it's, it's, it's peace of mind. It's, I will, I can play the next Halo. I can play the Gears of War. I can play the, all these games and don't have to keep dropping 60 bucks a month for, right? Red Dead Redemption's on. Great. I'm going to play that, right? If you, it's, it's Netflixizing, absolutely Netflixizing video games. And, and, and it's just another thing that's part of that entertainment package you do every month. So if you're on that level, but well, guys, uh, a lot of stuff going on. Obviously, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of crazy upturns going on in the world, and we've been rolling with the punches over here at Psychic Media Services. Of course, this is one of the things I got my report last month. Uh, Restream is one of the services that we do a lot of our multi streaming to, especially and this is still bringing you through Facebook through some of the software we have and everything, right? Um, and does a lot of other neat tricks and stuff. But one thing they give me is a nice little report at the end of the month of how much we streamed. Uh, we streamed about 32 hours of content to Facebook, Periscope, wherever. Um, 32 hours. So we're doing a lot of... That's over a day that we streamed video from this location. Uh, and this is where we're at. You know, this is where Psychic Media Services is uh, out of. Uh, to the, uh, you know, to say that we're <laughs> to say that we we we're very accustomed to streaming is an understatement. Probably at this point. Not to mention, I got a box over there throwing out pro wrestling twenty four hours a day over on Twitch. Please go watch Indie Wrestling US. Uh, so, uh, if you guys are looking for your streaming solutions, whether you're a church, whether you're somebody looking to do a, a panel about social issues, whether it's a con whatever it may be how maybe even a little thing called pro wrestling when we're allowed to do that again hit us up sidekickmediaservices.com if i if we can do live production on professional wrestling you better believe you're gonna have the best damn looking uh business conference we could possibly do because you guys aren't going to be flying out of the ring at us uh so that's that, that, that that's that's dedication right there sidekickmediaservices.com let's know how we can be the sidekick in your superhero project all right, guys. Uh, there's a couple other stories in here. Uh, what do you want to get at before we have to uh, roll out here? I know a couple. You guys put a couple of things down there at the bottom, right? Um, with the COVID and now uh, COVID things going on, did anybody see that wireless charging plus cleaning device yet? Mm, what is did you this? Guys see that? What is this? So it's something Samsung is cooking up. It's a uh, Line Seven. Okay, I got it. Okay. Um, I, I, it's just an interesting device. It's a wire, uh, you know, a, a basically a charging bank with some um, light. In what is it? Uh, UV mm-hmm. lights. Mm-hmm. So it's basically a box that you could put your phone in that will also charge your phone and clean it at the same time. I thought it was kind of an interesting idea. I don't know if it's something I would spend money on. But for somebody that that has concerns, maybe that works in the healthcare industry, mm-hmm. might be something that they would want to take a look at. I thought it was an interesting, uh, you know, interesting idea. This is not a new concept for we we, we, we now now I I trust Samsung more than whoever is advertising on Instagram as like the phone doctor or whatever. Uh, yeah, <laughs> because we we remember we talked about that before. Um, because I I I think the science is I mean. We, they're using UV, 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 UVs to uh, clean at the airport, you know, right. for the same thing. So, yeah, no, I think that would be fantastic if you can do that for your phone. Because if anything, that much is probably grosser than your phone. I've been just u- using hand sanitizer and just wiping it down every once in a while just to be safe. But, uh, no, I, I, I think this is – how much is this going for? 
So it says cleaning your um, phone, earbuds, or sun- sunglasses. I mean, it's really just a new v- in, a UV coffin for your 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 right. It's a UV coffin stuff. with a built-in ten watt wireless charger. Uh, selling it in um ger- in, in their German Samsung's German, Romanian, Singaporean, and Hong Kong stores in Germany. It's it's uh, selling for around sixty five dollars American. Uh, so. Not here yet, but um, I, I also don't know if that's been terribly popularized, um, you know, unfortunately, because of certain people bringing it up in certain ways. I think it's kind of been <laughs> a little poo-pooed at this point, uh, but the UVs is a pretty serious thing, so I, I would like to see them. I, so they're going to they're gonna release something like this here sooner or later, right? Yeah, I thought it was, I just thought it was kind of an interesting, uh, you know, idea, mm-hmm. so. So. Did you and I put a link in the the notes right under his? Did you see the the stylus? That uh, is it. Ad Adonit Adonoy. I don't know how to pronounce the name of their company. They they they're famous for making styli for numerous types of devices, and they actually have it where the UVC is built into the stylus. You can wave it over your surface. And it, it's built right in. I thought it was a pretty cool idea. Nice. Oh, that is kind of neat. You say so. It's not even. You don't even have to touch. No, it's like you take your. It would be like taking your stylus and wave it. Scroll down. And, or I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm scroll lagging down a little, little bit. Further. There's a. Yeah, they um, just basically take their pen and go over the device. Hmm. That's kind of interesting. Okay, so it's like these kind of toy things that kind of interact with it. No, 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 no. That's that's you cleaning it. That's you oh. cleaning it. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> you literally, you literally take the pen mm-hmm. and wait, just wave it over the device. Interesting. <laughs> and, and then now they're mostly talking about for surfaces. Uh, we're also talking about for iPads. Um, and Windows this one, this one I know is compatible with the Surface. I haven't mm-hmm. seen. Oh, there, I don't think they have one yet for the the iPad. So, so they, they, there's a giant, there's a giant uh, uh, list at the bottom that has their classic and their Bluetooth and and what they're compatible for. And I'm seeing everything from Surface, uh, Windows, touch screens, and and iPads. Various. It, it depends on what version of iPad you got. So that looks cool. So that's the add on it. Um, uh, ink UVC. So go check that out. Ger- Germicidal UVC integration. So that's great. we're all about the germs here on the. the yeah. I, hey, we're um. If anybody's gonna be germaphobes. It's gonna be on this show, right? Um. I think. I think we. We, we like I said. I, I was saying since the beginning. I was like, we got a whole new generation of germaphobes after what's happened in the last several months. Unfortunately. So. Uh. That's where we're at. Um, anything else? I think we are. Okay, that's two same stories. Gotcha. Free uh, game. Real, real, yeah, real quick, free games. Yeah, that's the one I was going to go after. Um, if you have time at 3 o'clock on Sunday afternoon, mm-hmm. if mm-hmm. you sign up for a Uplay account, which is free, it's, the, like, it's like Ubisoft's um, a, uh, game distribution thing. If you sign up for a free account and you log in at three o'clock and listen to their announcement, you get a free copy of Watch Dogs Two for PC. Nice, nice, and I do believe that is uh, going to be compatible with GeForce Now. If you're on that, I haven't played the first one yet. I have it sitting on uh, my my Xbox Gold. And uh, and it, it, have you guys played it? Is it worthwhile hopping Kra- into? Kraus has played it. I, I don't think I, I have played all of them. Yeah, um, the first one was very good. The second one was wasn't as good, mm. but it was still very entertaining. You know, good good game. Was it worth free? I, oh, it's worth free. Yes. I technically have two copies of it free already, so this will give me the one box <laughs> too. What well, uh, yeah. I got um I got a stack of games from Chachi and. And uh, about every game that he gave me ended up being free, not too far down the line from gold for the Xbox One. Uh, so Black Flag, and <laughs> I own three <laughs> copies of Black Flag. 
<laughs> I have a disc. I have the 360 on gold, and then I have the Xbox One version on gold. So, which I guess the the yeah, that, that's, that's funky. Uh, and then I keep collecting stuff on the Ubisoft and the Epic Store. So now I got another copy of Syndicate, which I've been starting to play. I started playing that on on Nvidia because it looks gorgeous, and I love that game yeah. so much. Then I just completed it, and I'm like. I'll start from the beginning just so I can play it on my phone. Sure, why not? I'll play the Dick- the Dickens missions on there. Why not? What's up, why Charles? Not? What's up, Charles yeah. Darwin? No, seriously. Like, uh, uh, the Syndicate, uh, Assassin's Creed Syndicate is the one in London in the uh, late 18th century during the Industrial Revolution. It is the most Assassin's Creed, Assassin's Creed. It is like peak Assassin's Creed to me. And I've only just started playing a little bit of uh, Assassin's Creed Origins, and it's very upsetting to me so far. Uh, so um they changed a lot they 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 started over and i'm 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 not i'm not there yet but i see where it's going (laughs) stuff for valhalla uh yeah i I saw everybody freaked out because they thought it looked too much like um like the last couple so you know yeah we'll see what happens it's early i'm interested i love that time period so i'm very oh i think it'll be fun i think that i i presume that will be peak this era of uh of that and if there's anything that's going to get me try to get the upper version hell i'm kind of killing myself for not having uh 4k ready versions to go play these last two assassin creed games because those ones are set for it right like yeah. if i if i should upgrade for anything that should be it so I'm trying to finish halo halo 5 right now that's that's what i'm on um so halo 5 was very good yeah it's it is it is very good i have about three ish missions left over there um so yeah it it goes halo goes fast when you get into it when when you're ready to roll it it's it, it is not a long run but it seems to take me forever to do it so crazy kraus ron kraus thank you for dropping in again thanks for having me i appreciate it and john chichilla that's me john chichilla on the facebook's chilla on the twitters uh yes katie was out on assignment or like yeah, Simon, I think is visiting family right now. Uh, if I got the time frame right, but uh, uh, she should be back next week. Uh, we do also have scheduled in two weeks. Cynthia Klosky of Shift Collaborative should be joining us again. So please, uh, again, we're we're waving. <laughs> we have a we have a kid run in on one of the lines. <laughs> uh, but uh, we should just have sorry, a I couldn't help it. Chilla, we should when just... the little chill on the screen, I have to say hi. Yeah, I, I, this is the second time tonight where I'm trying to conduct whatever business over here, and I just see <laughs> real wide on the camera waving happening like this. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's, no, it's fine. You're, we're, we're managing it. but uh, we'll, get it, we'll get him a computer in the other room. I mean, I, I needed to tell a dog to shut up a little bit ago, so... <laughs> Um, thank you everybody thank you awesome chatters hanging out in the chat room we'll see you guys next week you have been our awesome audience have an awesome week this show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network find out more at sorgatronmedia.com